morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever and wherever you are. Welcome back to the Beta Plows. We are playing as Byzantium within Hearts of Iron 4. So, I have organized my armies. No, they haven't moved yet. I will show you all that on camera. But, what I have Francis did is assign commanders. Now, I've noticed normally at the start of Greece, uh, at the, the start of Hearts of Iron 4, as Greece, you get only one general. Here we have a bunch of them, and also some really, really good ones. In fact, I would say that this is a little bit too much for this mod, personally. I would remove one of these guys and one of this guy, one level... F and perhaps put one of these level 4 into level 3, because this is, this is, wow, this is nearly German levels amount of commanders that we have. For the C, that is a little less so, we have just one commander, which is quite good. Um, so what are we going to do? We are going to set our fleet to do something. This fleet is going to patrol. It's just going to patrol the Eastern Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. Because we control the Bosporus and we can cross right through. And uh, yes, well, currently the most interesting things for us to patrol is that. Now our second fleet is a fleet of submarines. And these submarines they are going to do some convoy raiding, I reckon, or actually convoy ex escort, probably. No, we're not... That, that's a bit silly, because we do not have any convoys yet. We are not transporting goods as far as I know. So that's probably a little bit ridiculous. Oh, sorry. The problem is that some of these buttons... For some of these orders, you need right-click. For some of these orders, you need to do left-click. And that kind of confuses me at times why they have done that. But, uh, yeah. Hold. Like, out there, and uh, you're going to do Sir Destroy. In the difference between patrol is that they are a little bit more tightly together. And thus they will fight less things, as you can see, 50% instead of 160%. They will fight less, but they are at least together. And that's what I would like my subs to be. Um, I have given out the generals, and I have given out some orders. So let's slowly run the game here, and they will, as you see, start moving. This is a normal move, these are strategic moves, they are quickly being transported through railroads, and thus their organization, the green bar, becomes very, very low. Organization is more or less their um, meta of, well, uh, effectiveness in battle. The other one is, of course, the yellow one, which is shows if they have the proper equipment. I would uh, say that, and proper equipment, would that be the best description of it? I think it has a name for it, a little bit different than I'm saying. Um, I know that if I hover over this, it should show. Well, it is, well, its current fighting strength is only 30%. That's partially due to the organization and partially due to the equipment. It's a combination of both. Well, in this case, this guy has a lot of organization, but he has no equipment, and thus his strength is not at full. Whereas this guy's fighting strength is also really poor. 50%, but as you can see, that's he has more equipment, but because his organization is low, that is quite bad. Um, yeah, what we also have is air wings. And we have 50 interwar fighters, 50 interwar, uh, sorry, 50 interwar fighters that can go above Greece, which is what I want them to do, because this is the Greek air space, and that's always a little bit dicey to see, because... Well, this takes up the whole bloody screen on the, the, these orders over here, which I really don't like. Uh, tactical bombers. Thank you. In Greece. It takes up the whole bloody screen, so it's kind of hard to see. But if we go to war with Bulgaria, we need to fly over the Eastern Balkans. Currently, we're doing only Greece. We're going for air superiority, and we're going for interception, and we're going to go for close air support. And this is shown us our mission efficiency. Lacking range to complete the current covered area, and there you can see, well, it is not all good. We cannot all cover all of Greece, but seeing we are not currently at war, we don't really need to defend Greece so much, so I'm not too worried about their complaint regarding that subject. And here we can see all units moving to defend the entire border. Now, if I am correct, yeah, we miss one unit to cover this entire border. This border should be properly covered. And actually is doubly covered at this point, and this border is very well covered. Time to build some units, despite the fact that we have low manpower. I really want to build some units. What I want to build is, well, a division of tanks. Problem is, of course, <coughs> we hardly have any tanks yet, but they're being built. Another one that I'm going to train is some mountainous units, because, well, 
Mountains is something we are going to fight in a lot. And I mean a lot. And what I'm doing here is setting where they are going to pop out. And I'm going to plot them out in Bidnia. Why is that? Well, if we conquer Turkey and we ever going to meet up with Russia, well, this is all kinds of hills and mountains areas because we will be nearing the border of the Caucasus. And also with Iran, there's a lot of border. And also with Syria, there's a lot of mountains and what have you not. Also, of course, quite a bit of desert, but mountains, mountains and hills is what we're going to fight a lot in. And those troops do well in that area. Let's also set for our construction, oh, sorry, our production, not our construction, that all submarines should join our submarine fleet, which I think is this one, and this is our normal fleet, the Vasilico, Polemico, Naftico? I'm just gonna go with, that was awesomely pronounced, and I probably did not do that, but yes, I was correct. Alright. Moving in our troops. Oh, actually, perhaps we do have enough troops, but it's always good to train troops Certainly when we plan on changing our subscription laws, which we can do as fascists Which is why we can went for politics and what have you not so yep time to crank up the speed because in the beginning you are just Ramping up for war and I don't want to make claims just yet. and I certainly don't want to produce claims because we can get claims And I want to reclaim Trasha as one of the first things to do I do hope that reclaiming Thracia... Actually, what is the other one we can go? Is reclaim Anatolia. So we can either go with Turkey or with Bulgaria. Well, I want both of them. But I think Bulgaria can be... Well, it can be befriended by Italy and then it is more dangerous. Whereas Turkey doesn't really get a lot of friends most of the time very easily. Oh, only later in the game when the Axis has grown strong. Um, they sometimes join up with the Allies when they get attacked. But, uh, yeah, they are definitely not happy with me. They hold our core territories, they have claimed our territory. We actually already have claims here on the territory? Do we? Oh, how nice. Yes, the old regions into Trebizond. Oh, lovely. That would mean that it would be very easy to, well, get some manpower there. So running over Turkey would be good. Would be a very nice thing to do. Um, so Turkey is definitely an idea, but Bulgaria is very, very soft. And I do think, if we get claims, that it will cons be considered as our course if we take it. I'm not really sure about that, though. Let me just check here. We have a core as a state, and if we claim it might not become a core, so I'm not sure if that is the case. Well, hey, this is the first time I also run the mod, so you will have to forgive me that I don't know everything. So let us see what Italy is doing. Italy... Italy is going for Ethiopian war logistics. They stomp the game out with war with Ethiopia. Alright, what is Germany doing? Germany is, is going to remilitarize this red zone. Because it's a demilitarized zone at the start of the game. The Rhineland. They're going a pretty historical route. What is... Are you doing? The Great Purge. Also very, very historical. Where Stalin kind of cut, like, I don't know, 50% of the... Um, <clears throat> military staff of the Russians because he didn't trust them. So Japan, what are you doing? You are doing for going with the army primacy. I don't know if that is entirely historically accurate. And what is France doing? Metropolitan France, you are going into the construction line. Proper, because extra resource slots really, really good. We are just going down the political tree for, oh, reasons. He is doing to reinforce the Empire England, which is a uh, yeah, base unity uh, needs to go up. Which, uh, with England, at the start of the game, it's a wee bit low. But it can go up pretty freaking darn quickly. And currently, uh, because of its king, it's actually going down. Another country that starts actually with quite low unity is the United States of America. 60% isn't that high. Alright. But yeah, we're just passing up the time right now and see, waiting for our national focuses to finish this. To finish this? To finish in order to, well, go the route of the uh, fascists. I actually hope that mm, there will be a nice portrait for Georgios Cosmides, because normally they get just a very generalized portrait if you go fascist as Greek. Trust me, I've seen it because I pushed Greek into becoming a fascist and becoming a puppet of mine when I played as Italy. Oh, 
Hungary also now with its correct flag. Lovely. Well, there is the Rhineland remilitarized and there is all for the finished. Now don't you worry if you're doing it like this. You can definitely have um uh, you can wait a few days before you lose research points or focus points. It's about 30 days, I believe, if I'm correct. And um, we are gonna go with Reclaim Thracia, I reckon. Yeah, because we friend Bulgaria. They will be then part of our faction. We, But then again, we might want to go with the Axis first. And I do want more land. Hopefully, we have to see also if these claims are indeed true become coarse, because that's kind of an important thing. Oh, otherwise, Poppleton is always better than have them as an ally, because Poppleton, they really do what we say. But friends, you just have to see. So we are going to go reclaim Thracia, and we can reform our government. No, the first thing we are going to reform is, I would love to reform the civilian economy, can't. Free trade isn't a bad thing, because factory output and less research time, awesome. But first, I really want to go fascist, and thus I'm going to go with Fascist politician. Fascism on the rise. The Byzantine people have a noble history. We do. A history they have been made to forget under the weak and cowardice rules of Metaxo. Well, actually, he won the war in this case, but, uh, well... The opinion of the world, shall we say. Uh, so... They claim to represent the people, but can so feebly the state enforce the will of the people? Only by spilling the blood of these traitors can we fulfill our destiny. The fascist speakers in Byzantium have made no secret of what they think of our current rulership and political system. Speeches like these have tapped into the public dissent that is particularly pronounced in the more conservative section of the military. I'm gonna go with... Um, if you go, the younger generation will take up the torch. You have... Um, chance for events that will lower your national unity, which is bad, but will give the fascists a lot of, of, of support, like 15%. With the higher up, you have more of a chance to get, a, a, well, internal support, as it says here, which means a coup, without actually the fascists going up that much. Now that we have that much unity, I am considering the younger generation, but I am going to go with the higher ups. I, because that seems more pronounced, like, the military has won the war against Turkey, it's the military that will make Greek into a true Byzantium, and all factories are spewing forth their items that we need for war. Uh, we need to build 215, we're working on that, that's for the new stuff that we're building, and holy heck, look at that, we need a 10,000 new guns. And there is the Spanish Civil War. Now. I don't think we can do something with Spanish Civil War so at the current moment, because we cannot send volunteers unless we have... We need world tension at 40%. That's because we are simply non-aligned. We are not fascist yet, and thus we cannot help either fascist Spain or nationalist Spain. And we cannot send volunteers because well, also we also need 30 volunteers, so more or less... We can't do anything about the Spanish Civil War in this gameplay. Sorry, can't do. No can do, Bob. No can do. But, oh, Turkey also has tanks. Hmm, I think they normally don't, so Turkey also has been buffed a little bit by this mod. Perfect. They should be buffed by this mod. Oh, I actually never renamed the theaters. So this is the Turkish theater. Alright, and this is the Bulgarian theater. Bulgarian theater. Perfect. We are going to tell this army that they have... We have a war plan, and the war plan is to take Ankara and the airport. I first wanted to move like this, and I would like them also to... Oh, sorry. Darn it. The game, uh, oh, the game runs well enough that I... Oh, this is a really bad offensive line. <laughs> Let me just redraw that. That's what you use this tool for, alright? Let's just... Let's redraw that. We want you to go to Ankara and then go like that. We want this victory point. And we want you... And the victory point being Konya, by the way. Like this. This is how we want the army to move up. Let's see if we can do so. That is our offensive plan, because well, if you take Ankara, that's worth 10 victory points. 
Konya is also worth 10 victory points. Antalya only 1. 5 for Andana. 3 for... Uh, oh, I think I said Andana, but that might be the... No, it is Andana. It's the city Andana, and this is also in Andana, but then the state Andana, and the city is called Gizionta. And this is Trabzon, or no, now Trabzon. So, 3, 3, and 5 make for 11, 21, 31, 32 victory points in Tur Turkey. has a national unity of 55, so we need 55% uh, of the victory points in order to win. So, if we capture... Uh, Ankara and Konya, we have 20 already. Now we need just a wee bit more to win. Um, and with this, we have 21, and they will have 5, 3, and 3 is 11. Oh, darn it, they, uh, I've missed Van. Okay, so this won't even be, it will, won't be enough to let Turkey bend the knee. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. Well, here you see, I now paused it, but you can see this green bar moved up, even if I was a little bit later. It doesn't matter, because it was all saved up. And it now looks a lot smaller, but that's because this is 272 days. But you already saw it was 2.5% filled. And the next tank that we took is another tank to decrease our research time. Always handy. Always handy. Now, we are planning on taking Bulgaria, and Bulgaria is a rather easy country to take. We just need... Oh, sorry, I misdrew that. Sofia plus this city. Plus with. And we will have won. And National Spain wants access. Yeah, sure, you can have that. Where is our tank unit? Here. Alright, because that might become very important. Alright then. We'll just wait until we can reclaim Tracia. That is the important thing that we need to do. I do hope we get cores on them. Otherwise we're still going to bloody attack. I just don't think we can puppet them yet because we are non-aligned and only uh, fascists I think and communists are the ones that can puppet. No, actually that's not true because democrats can also definitely puppet. Hmm. We could wait with the war in that case but... Yeah, that will slow us down. Then we should have gone for Anatolia in the first place. And I only want to have this here. I want to have this lance because I want to be able to fabricate on Romania because of their lovely, lovely oil resource. The largest oil resource around. Even greater than the Ir Iranian and Iraqi oil fields. Yowza, yes please. Because we don't have a lot of oil. We will get us some oil if we, will, if we conquer Turkey, but... We're relying on that now to immediately succeed, now can we? But this will tank our manpower, don't you misinterpret that. In fact, I may even tell the Yugoslavia theater to join in this war for now. You know what, let's do that. You all are under the, the... And put our best general in here, yes. One that is a, a mountaineer expert, a hill expert, and an artillery expert, and we will give this army the second best commander. Because the level also matters. For each level you get a plus 5 bonus, so yes, put your best general on the most important front and you will have a much easier time of it. This is a crazy start to have not going for research slot, but going for war, but we want to be big quick. We need to eat, yo. There we have it. Tracia has long been part of Basilia Ton Roman. Should it be returned? Well, we say it shall be ours. Or we can say let there be peace. No, it shall be ours. And they get an ultimatum, it says? Is that really true? Like, will they surrender? Our just claim has been refused. Let them face the consequences of their folly. And we are at war. Alright. Well. Time to execute our plan. Uh, because we are at war with Bulgaria. We are executing our plan in order to conquer this. They did not give in to our demands that it should be ours. And we should start considering the next technology. There is 
concentrated industry and there is dispersed industry. Concentrated industry has more output but is more vulnerable to bombardment and if you change your production line, like if you, I change the factory from here to here, efficiency will be lost, the red bar will become bigger and you will not produce as fast and quickly. If you have disper dispersed uh, industry, you have a little bit of retention, plus 10%. More or less, the small country, the better it is to have dispersed. The less likely you think it is to, that you get bombed, the better it is to have concentrated industry. We're going for concentrated industry. Because the enemies we face, I do not think that they will be capable of... Uh, well, countering us right now. We're going down this line. We really want... Uh, where does Muzia lie, to be honest? Dobruja. Is that not in Rom Romania? That's Mutia. Where does Dobruja lie? Before we start deciding where we are going to go. Dobruja? I'm sorry if you live in that area and like... Duh, you, everybody knows where that is. Well, unfortunately, I apparently do not. Because I just want to know where this focus leads to. Gets you to claim Musia. Now you say it's Musia. The moment ago was no Dobruja. So um, indeed, Dobruja. Where does this lie? It is a state in Romania. Very very small. Well, that is definitely a, a way we want to go because that is. Oh, actually, that's uh, Bulgaria has a claim on it, as it does have a claim on Tras, by the way. Because Bulgaria was once indeed a little bit larger. And they start with those claims. And normally Greece starts with a claim over here. Um, well, that's interesting. Yeah, we're going to go very aggressive. Less research. First, very aggressive. Then to try to stay out of the Great Wars. And then we will uh, do things differently. But we, we haven't declared war just yet. So now it is time to properly declare war. All right, here we go. And there is our immediate attack. And, well, all those green numbers give you the percentage chance that you are winning. Now, what we also should definitely do immediately is... Go over the Eastern Balkans. Because that is where the fight is being started. Now, you immediately saw that Greece changed. Because we don't have air dominance anymore there. But what we do have is we have the ability to help out these troops by giving them air support. It's not going as smoothly as I hoped. Oh, but there it goes already on the side here. Perfect. Uh, you can stop with this attack because you're losing that one. And that's not surprising if you notice that there are three divisions over here. We'll probably lose some fighters, so we probably have to rebuild them, but that will be for later. It's noticeable that these three are not doing anything to attack. And giving you a, a plan like this actually improves your attack uh, ratio. So that's why it's also also very good to have a plan. But sometimes it's also definitely good to, well, you know, uh, make your own plans and tell the AI, yo, go here, you numbnuts. Um, actually, don't go there like that. Yeah, but that's the way to do it. Well, we do want plot diff. You know, can you continue with that attack immediately? Thank you. Because if we get that, that's immediately a victory point. And I want you, the tanks, to join up with that fight. You are moving into that area, alright. Actually stop that movement and go there. Wait, when? This is uh, a little bit tricky to notice where everything is going. These mountain divisions, can you please join the attack? I'm not certain now if we are. Yes, we are. All right, good. And now, these are all guys also attacking, and we are taking this province. And the tank, well, for a moment there, it looked like we were uh, in trouble, but when the tank joined, well, it was over. 
Now, this fight I just opened up another theater, and then you get a bonus of attacking from multiple directions. But the enemy has air superiority, so that is a wee bit annoying. And yes, there it is, missing equipment, probably fighters, because they have been downed, and tactical bombers, both of them. That is painful. But we will deal with that later. Because what we now need to do is immediately charge for Sophia. Because why is that? This game is all about victory points. It doesn't really care about um, uh, how many armies there are left or what have you not. Like in Seeker 2, you want a certain amount of war score and that is the thing that you need. Ooh, and there are fascist sympathies in the military. Several high-ranking members of the Byzantine military have expressed support, some privately and some openly, for the fascist movement. Oh. In Byzantium, they feel the Metaxa has forgotten how important discipline and patriotism is to keep them together, and are increasingly annoyed by the army being treated by the government as a more of a tool than one of the national nation's most important institutions. Some of them go as far as to suggest that a new government is needed, one that knows how to lead Byzantium with strength and tradition into the next half of the century. This faction may not be predominantly may not predominantly be politician, politicians, but some of them have gained position in the Department of Defense. If these developments continue, they may have sufficient political support to execute a coup. Alright, there is our first warning. So we have Sophia. That is excellent. Uh, I would, if we could just get Plovdiv, we should have won this war. But um, we have won it, and there become the negotiations. So I should have checked if we actually would have... Uh, gained anything else like oh sorry if we if these were cores but this is how the negotiation system works you have a certain amount of points for the victory you can take all of these and that is then what happens if you are a minor in the negotiations you could say something else like pass up and have to wait until you can take a state because each state takes points now because we are non-aligned as you can see we can do nothing but take them we are going to take all claimed states, because we cannot puppet them. It is simply what it is, so we are going to say like this. It shows what happens. You say done, there's no need to pass it up, and voila, end of the war. State owner, It's an, but it's a colony state, so you can see as a colony state, and this is very important, we can use it to build factories in that is just fine actually currently not because well it is at its maximum but uh from colony states if we now look at our manpower of eligible non-core population available only 0.49 percent so really and that's 6.12 million people that live in here so that's why it would have been nice to puppet them in a sense but doesn't this border look much better i think so but yeah they were unfortunately not cores that is really really unfortunate Oh well. Can't help it. We are non aligned for the moment, and thus we cannot pop at them. And we want, uh, well, Romania, we want about this area to be ours. And the rest, more or less puppeting and what have you not. This was our first war, this was our first showcase of it. Let's reorganize the theaters. We are going to organize the theater around this border. And that is probably the first. The next war we might want to do is on Yugoslavia, not on Romania. We know we have low manpower, cannot do anything about it. And we have gained some military factories that we just conquered. So we want to build some airplanes. Now, they are complaining about not having enough rubber. Well, despite not having enough rubber, they will still try to produce them. And they will just will produce them at a slower pace. How many factories do we currently have building? 11. Okay, I think that's good enough to get some rubber. Sometimes it is not a bad idea to just say, screw it, then not, then we will not have the items, we will just build a little slower. But that is all victory. How many wings did we lose? We lost one tactical bomber. Wait, if we have lost one tactical bomber, why do we need both planes then? That would be a bit of a pointless line in that case. Yes. Just build this one guy, and then build, let more factories build uh, the guns, because we really do need them. And as soon as this need is also filled, I kind of have like, okay, we're done. Um, let us get the next political guy. That's construction speed of military, opinion, 
Oh, political... Science War Course. Political war power game. There is one that is very good that lets you build civilian factories faster, lets you build uh, railroad faster. It's a really, really, really good uh, person, but not every country has them. These guys that you are hiring here, your advisors, your political advisors, they change just like your theorist changes, just like your military high commands. They depend on your country, who you can select. But yeah, the world is already at 11% uh, world tension. As world tension rises, other things can occur. Like, uh, people can be, uh, for instance, guaranteed by other nations. We want to attack Yugoslavia before that happens. We want to be able to attack them without intervention from other countries. So we need to do that before 25%, but currently we are the biggest bully in the world. Byzantium, 6.5%. The last change was the Peace Treaty of Varna, and that uh, caused 5.5% extra world tension. The fact that Byzantium claimed all of Bulgaria, well, we gave them all to meet him, they could have just joined us. Let's go for excavation, extra resource gain. And let's see how it is with the resistance. Ah, uh, the resistance is really, really low. That is because, well... Resistance can grow only in fully occupied non-core states. That's really funny. Well... Sorry, Bulgarian people. You are now part of the Byzantine Empire. Byzantium. Doesn't that look nice? And hopefully, before we go to war with Yugoslavia, we will have turned fascist. And thus, we can... Puppet, the rest, um, the remaining part of the country, once we win this war and claim our uh, other areas. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if I would just keep that war up for as long as is necessary until we can puppet them with fascism. Now, also, this war gave us experience. Now, that experience I want to use because. Oh, back. The fact of the matter is that uh, these. Divisions, they are not optimized right now. They have some tanks, tanks are good for short attacks, and infantry for the HP so they can last a little bit longer, more or less. They have engineer companies to, well, get themselves a little bit more entrenched and work better at certain things. But for, what I could, for instance, do is add artillery. Lowers the armor, lowers the piercing, but adds to the attack. Organization is lower, it's always when you add a support and thing. You can do all these kinds of things, and you, for that, you need experience. It's a bit funky in mechanics, in my opinion, but that's how it works. Engineering companies, uh, they are pretty awesome as support companies. I would say engineering, because it allows you to, well, let me show you here, get a lot of terrain bonuses. That is pretty freaking awesome. Also, actually, breakthrough and what have you not. The other ones that are really good is Field Hospital, because, well, people that are hurt in, the, in battle can actually b trickle back. The first one is really awesome. Experience loss from losing men that die to battle and trickle back to 20% of the casualties go back to battle. Awesome. Another one is Signal Company, because you get initiative, and that quicker it can reinforce in battle, and the quicker it gets the planning done. Very nice. And another one is Engineering Companies. Because that's very good for maintenance for, well, companies that require it. Recon, also really not bad. Also, all kinds of terrain bonuses, but look at that penalty for breakthrough and hard attack and what have you not. Eesh. That is a bit in the disadvantage. But they are very good with marines, for instance. And military police is very good with um, cavalry units. Because cavalry has naturally a high suppression. And with a high suppression, and with military police on top of that, conquered areas will not really grow a lot in unrest and what have you not, which is of course always a little bit of a disadvantage. If people are being a bit pissy about being conquered, they should just be happy for, well, having entered the glorious Byzantine Empire. So let's rebase all of our planes if we are indeed going to attack Yugoslavia. And we actually have gotten nine extra fighters here as well. All right. I think I positioned those guys wrong. Hold on. And here we go. Macedonia. We are going to send our ultimatum to them. Perhaps a little too quick.
quick because we don't know how fast we're going to go fascist. Go here. Let us just see if Yugoslavia accepts or not. Probably not. Two arms. Well, in our next episode, we are going to go to war with Yugoslavia. I'll say I thank you for watching, and remember, great peril yields great beauty.